So that's why they respect the police. This is, you don't ever, they don't like respect the farmer, <laughs> you know. Uh, between 76 and 98, uh, police killed up to five times as many individuals as they themselves have been killed. And that's not to downplay the, the life, because it's all life, you know. Police are from the working class, but it's, it's not okay to kill on the average one, more than one person a day in our society. We're I mean, supposed to be protecting and serving. Uh, police officers don't act this way in a vacuum or by accident. Their behavior, abusive violence, and political repression is condoned by politicians, courts, and governing bodies. Superiors, not just in action or complicity. They don't just sit by and like, oh, I'm not going to do anything. But they actually encourage and promote it. They came out in my case to back up their officers. Even though the evidence clearly shows abuse and lines, they still came out and said it was correct. Even when the video clearly showed everything that in the report was mostly lies. In Ronnie King's case, no one was held accountable. The accountability checks and balances are a joke. They are just a ploy to keep us believing there is accountability and justice so we don't organize to take back our world. And it's, again, our responsibility. In my case, we were at MNC Bank, peacefully assembled, having to speak out at the end of a peaceful rally when the police arrived to, the huge, uh, to protect a huge, rich bank from people standing on the edge of their public courtyard. Oh, my gosh. Meanwhile, the bank can steal millions of dollars and invest in war activities and do all other things monopoly capitalist banks engage in to siphon the world's wealth into their pockets. We were asked to get down, and we did. And the only, th only then was I forcefully dragged back on a property, club, mason, jail. Uh, you know, they were just given, handed over money. Uh, <laughs> black males in the city of Buffalo have a 75% non-graduation rate. Like, that's outrageous. Why couldn't you just give $600 million to the city of Buffalo to help out their schools? Um, I want to ask again, briefly, if people could shout out some things that we could use $600 million for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, just shout them out briefly. Health gardens. Healthcare gardens. Teachers. Teachers. Making houses lead safe. Making houses lead safe. Cleaning water. Cleaning water. Insulating houses. Insulating houses. Insulating houses. Healthcare. Healthcare. On Florida, I needed water. Yeah. But no leading up the police department. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. We're going to hand it out with no stipulations to a huge conglomerate, already rich bank. Oh, you don't have enough? You already have a lot of money. Here, have some more. Oh, oh, you don't have enough money. Let me take you some more of that from you. Right. Um, <laughs> this could have been avoided in many ways. They could have approached us with respect, and then after we got off the property that they were sent to, they could have left. Another way it could have been avoided is the same man who roughed me up Roughed another older man in his 60s, just months before, trying to use a bathroom at this bus station downtown. After being brutalized by Brodsky, he faced criminal charges. <laughs> it's outrageous. Judge McLeod threw out the charges, saying they would have been a miscarriage of justice. Only, only reason because a woman who worked at the Buffalo News witnessed the whole thing and bravely came right. out and spoke That's out right. in, in, in Ednock's behalf. <laughs> Where were the charges then brought and disciplined against the perpetrator and the criminal in this situation? None. None at all. Though this force, everyone else's eyes, was unacceptable, to the NFTA and their governing structure, gave Brodsky the green light and the stamp of approval. Fast forward to my case. The same officer does the abuse. And who knows how many other countless victims who don't have witnesses, videos, support like I do, the money or necessary to defense that who were mistreated abused. Because people in the NFTA and the executive director, Kimberly Minkle, who, my friend Moore wrote a thing and exposed, makes $170,000 a, a year uh, for an organization to put the green light to people abusing the public. How was it that there was a group of NFTA officers across the street during this incident standing around the terrorism task force, which Brodsky came from? Brodsky came across the street and, oh wow, they had Velcro name tags. Like, if it, that in and of itself isn't a crime, just to have Velcro name tags. He didn't have his name tag on. It wasn't as if this was like, oh, haphazard. He was just there and didn't have a name tag. He was sent over by them, and he was the one who tackled, maced, and clubbed. It's, that's what they do. That's what correctional officers do. That's what a lot of the police officers do. When they're ready to go beat on somebody, they just take off their accountability, and they can go do it. That's what, right. he, that's what they did. And he was, already has a long history, so they knew it. 
Um, this is kind of, I don't know if people know who Rob Ray is. Rob Ray is a saber. He's not much of a hockey player, but he's a fighter. And <laughs> when, when there's a, a fight that needs to happen, uh, they send Rob Ray out. It's like, they're like, he's like their Rob Ray. Everyone knows it, but he doesn't even get a penalty. Brodsky gets it to green line. You keep going. Um, uh, Don Esmond, I want to make a quick respect out to him. He wrote three articles. Once again, the NFTA crossed the line. The purpose of the police is to protect and serve. It was more like agitate and abuse. Number two, video shows cop reports report to be fiction. If the NFTA officers involved in recent confrontation anti-war protesters need a bump in their pay, they could always take a second job writing fiction. Number three, whitewash by the NFTA is an injustice. Good thing the NFTA is better at running buses than reviewing its police force. Otherwise, its vehicles <laughs> would end up in a ditch. Uh, some of the good has come of this. The NFTA says it will set an internal affairs unit. All of its officers are supposed to get a refresher course on using pepper spray. Finally, <laughs> Brodsky had to read and take a written test and manual about proper interaction skills with the public. Presumably, that doesn't include pepper spraying of compliant citizens. All of which just leaves us to no closer to justice, nor does it make us feel any safer. Um, let me bring up a, a more severe case of brutality, Rodney King, which most people know about. Rodney King was on a 10-minute car chase, then pulled over. He got out of the car, was ordered to lay down, got on all fours, and was tasered twice, which was followed by a group of police officers clubbing King 56 times, kicking him in the body and the head. The rest of the car were lying on the ground, face down, handcuffs, ordered to not look at their friend uh, while he was beaten. One who was clubbed, one, one did actually look at his friend while he was beaten. No, you can't look at your friend while he's beaten. Bam! Slammed him in the head. Um, this is, this is the kind of behavior, and so I thank everyone who was in the crowd that day, who followed us up there, who had their cameras out, didn't allow the abuse to be larger, because it could have been a lot worse. If they did that with people videotaping, who knows what they would do without anybody. Um, King suffered 27 stitches, broken cheekbone, broken ankle, injured kidneys, permanent brain damage. Nurses reported hearing the officers bragging about beating him. This was on national television, 23 officers responded, four of which were LAPD field training officers themselves. But they didn't see anything wrong with this. The four officers were brought up on charges, were acquitted, one lost his job because he was in a probationary period. Uh, period. The sergeant who tasered and wrote up the report also wrote a book. He has this to say, just another night in the LAPD, that's what it's been. The force was used was well, within guidelines of the LAPD. I made sure of that. And I was proud of the professionalism the officers had shown in subduing a really monster guy a felony evader seen committing numerous <coughs> traffic violations. Really, traffic violations? We're talking about the theft and plunder of our entire world, and we're going to beat a man half to death for traffic violations? This is the system we live under, where all these other crimes that they commit, that they're in power, just get completely brushed under the rug, and you and I have to just get beat for no reason whatsoever, or traffic violations. Um, just on the front page of the Buffalo News, uh, man, Joseph Wilson from East Aurora, it just was in last, last month. You can watch the video online. He was pulled over. He called his girlfriend to give him a ride home. And um, he gets out of the car to shake the police officer's hand. Anyway, he gets maced in the face as he's going back to his car. And he gets beaten on the ground. He's, and the police officer saying, stop resisting arrest. He's like, I'm not resisting arrest. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, he gets beaten. Anyway, this is what the East Aurora town court had to say, uh, the village had to say. Use no more force than reasonably necessary under the circumstances to carry out official responsibilities and functions. The conduct of the police officers was lawful and proper in the face of the plaintiff's failure to obey officers' lawful and reasonable requests. This is basically like, do what we say, or you, we will beat you. And, um, and anyway, he was rewarded money. Now that money that he was rewarded uh, on the settlement, it comes from our pocket. We pay the police, and then we pay for them to mess up, and then they don't even have any accountability. So we're just basically more money siphoned off of our wallets for like this kind of nonsense. Um, Henry Louis Gates, he's the director of Harvard W.E. Du Bois Institute for African and African American Research. Um, he was entering his home in a wealthy neighborhood after showing his Harvard ID and license, and it made national news uh, because the officer who arrested him did diversity training for the, the place. So the, all the reasons I, I, I cite which is not, again, an exhaustive list, but it's all because there's video evidence and there's support. If the police's word would have been taken as gospel and there wouldn't have been any other evidence, they, the police would have been believed. Oh, we're going to believe a criminal or a police officer. 
Um, and we're supposed to wait for accountability boards that have no power, in-house oversight committees that okay abuse, lying, uh, diversity trainers that arrest a black man for entering his own home, field, tra field training officers that beat Rodney King. This is the kind of accountability we're supposed to wait for. Time after time, case after case, video after video, story after story, and we're supposed to trust and wait for the protection from them? No accountability, no justice, no peace. None. Just green lights and fat checks made out to those in charge to continue this practice. Because the rich and the powerful want abuse, violence, pointed at us all the time, so we live in fear. Fear of their abuse, violence, their jails. Fear to step out the order of the society that, that they run to keep their wealth. Remember, when we're in fear, we don't think. If we're constantly in fear, we don't have a chance to think about what's going on. And they want all the protection of the law and none of its constraints. They are the criminal. And you don't bring your grievance to the criminal expecting a solution. It's like the fox watching the hen house. It's, again, it's our responsibility to organize and have control over our own communities. So this system of exploitation we live under lives by any means necessary to plunder the earth. And the force sometimes goes against the rich and the powerful. Um, let's take example Gaddafi. Uh, this might seem, oh uh, yeah, so just recently, our most recent um, intervention was in Libya. And Libya, located in Africa, so this is the, this is the UN uh, Human Developed Report. I just want to sell, this is to show uh, they don't care about life. All the force that they use is not legitimate. They're not legitimate on these streets, they're not legitimate across the world with their violence. And their violence is only to perpetrate 